welcome to Edison Open House Space 2022. In this session, we want to highlight the work of Creotech Instruments. It's a Polish company that develops and manufactures satellite systems, as well as advanced electronics for quantum control systems and much more. I'm delighted to have with us Gregorz Bronner, its founder and CEO. Gregorz, delighted to have you here. I'm delighted to be here. So tell us a bit more about Creotech Instruments. You were its founder, as I said. What were you thinking when you founded it and what's its strategy and ambition? Mm -hmm. Right, Creotech Instruments was established in 2012 by a group of former employees of the European Organization for Nuclear Research, that is CERN. Our ambition was to create a cutting edge high-tech company in Central Europe by looking forward 10 or even 15 years ahead and try to define technologies of the future. And according to our foresight, uh, these were usage of small satellites uh, in huge constellations and informations, uh, quantum computing and quantum telecommunication, and finally UAV operation beyond uh, visual line of sight. Well, to achieve these goals uh, in such complex fields uh, of new tech, uh, we decided to adopt free stage strategy. At first, uh, we looked for a non-dilutive funding, uh, also known as European Grants for Innovation. Um, they were used to gather the best of the best engineers and specialists in our part of Europe uh, and to create uh, laboratories and production facilities. And then we decided to start cooperation with the most prominent uh, institutes and in international agencies uh, to learn the market and to learn more about the technology. Among our clients, uh, their European Space Agency, European Organization for Nuclear Research, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, University of Berkeley and University of Oxford, just to mention a few. Finally, uh, at the step number three, uh, after gaining experience and first-hand knowledge about the market, we have focused on creating our own products uh, and to go to the wide open international market. And I think you've already been involved in 14 space missions. So you've got a very solid history. Yes, indeed. Uh, we have started uh, to collaborate uh, with the European Space Agency in 2012. Uh, and uh, since then, uh, we, we, we took part in several missions, including ExoMars 2016 and uh, this year, JUICE mission. This is a mission to Jupiter. So you've outlined these main areas of activity, new space technologies, quantum computers and the UAV. Can you say a little more, uh, firstly, about quantum computers? Yes, sure. Um, well, basically, in all of the areas of our activities, we see ourselves as a service company, or better, we are a toolbox. Uh, we provide tools um, for other companies uh, to develop. Um, in the quantum computer segment, uh, it's especially uh, visible. We are here not to compete with the companies uh, that build prototypes of quantum computers. On contrary, Creotech is offering systems that helps to control and read out uh, quantum processors. We will not be the next uh, Intel or AMD of quantum era. We will rather provide uh, all electronic peripherals uh, for such quantum processors companies, enabling them to develop quantum supremacy faster, cheaper, and more reliable. Well, uh, the same is uh, actually visible in our space activities. Uh, we see here that there's a growing demand for small satellites. More and more companies are deploying or planning to deploy their own small satellites constellations. By the year 2030, the number of small satellites um, will reach, uh, let's say, 25,000. Moreover, lifetimes of uh, such small satellites spans between three and seven years. Frequent refreshment of space assets is therefore actually needed. Creotech will not operate its own um, constellation of satellites. We believe that soon it will be a red business ocean. However, we'll provide tools for companies that plan to operate their own small satellite constellations. We are preparing and will be soon providing 
a small satellite multifunction platform that could host different payloads. For instance, telescopes uh, or telecommunication transport, uh, transporters, or maybe AIS systems. Now, this, this is, is the, this is your hypersat uh, yes, this configuration, is, isn't this it? Is, Which is a kind is, of a universal platform. Indeed, um, for in, indeed, this is a hypersat uh, uh, platform, uh, as as we call it. Uh, this is a microsatellite multifunctional platform. Uh, it is actually optimized for satellites with a mass between ten and 60 kilograms. Uh, this is well above so-called CubeSat mass range. Um, we believe that already there are many, many companies offering nanosatellites, uh, so the, the satellites uh, with the mass smaller than 10 kilograms, uh, but still there are far not enough solutions for microsatellites uh, in the mass range beyond 10 kilograms. And, and here we are. Uh, Hypersat will be one of the first such scalable and modular solution on the market uh, in this mass range. Uh, moreover, we have uh, a lot of um, other uh, technology, technological, um, uh, te technologi te technological, uh, technological uh, key points here. Uh, our platform is based on so-called Space VPX standards, uh, providing full system redundancy, so the platform is pretty safe. Uh, it can operate with ion and chemical propulsion and host on board uh, a so supercomputer and software-defined radio for secure communication. Uh, Hypersat provides uh, on-orbit software reconfiguration option and is actually based uh, on commonly available components, so-called COTS components components. With precise uh, attitude uh, and orbit uh, control system uh, and available uh, on board power uh, of more than 100 watts, uh, Hypersat provides uh, capabilities that go far beyond uh, what even the best solution based on the CubeSat standard uh, can provide. And moreover, thanks to the interface with CubeSats, it can reuse most of the solutions prepared for the standards. Uh, so we are um, in the niche that is a little bit above CubeSats, but still below um, what is offered by such a huge companies like Airbus, uh, Thales or Maxar. So who do you see as being your future clients for Hypersat? We actually started uh, to develop Hypersat platform in 2017. Uh, at the moment, let's say 70% of work is done. Uh, our maiden mission is planned for the next year. It will be a test uh, in space uh, of all of our components uh, of the microsatellite light solution. And then Hypersat will gain a space heritage. Uh, we have our first uh, commercial client uh, so far. It's a mission planned for 2024 uh, when we are providing free satellite platforms uh, for military projects for the Polish MOD. Um, with Hypersat tested in space next year, we plan to appro approach new space companies that are thinking of deploying their own constellation or have already satellites in space and are looking for the next generation solution. Uh, with Hypersat, uh, they will move uh, faster, cheaper, and better. Uh, but we will also approach space agencies, including European Space Agency uh, and European Commission. Uh, our solution is fully European and prepared according to European Space Agency standards, quality standards. Therefore, not only private sector, but also public sector uh, is open to our solution. Well, actually, at the moment, we have uh, production lines and production facilities ready to produce tens of Hypersat platforms uh, per year. And this is our goal for the year 2025. So, as we said, we've got, you've got these three elements of your company, the space technologies, the quantum computers, the UAV. How do you see your revenue uh, for the company developing between these three operations over the next decade? Well, uh, we are a mix uh, between uh, a value company and a growth company. Uh, as a value company, we are already selling our solutions and services worldwide uh, with a revenue of 8 million of euros uh, per year and a positive EBITDA. We prove that our products are welcome on the market. Still, with 90% of products under development and most of the market untouched, uh, we have a huge potential to grow. 
Uh, gaining space heritage uh, for our microsatellite platform, we believe that after year 2024, this will be our flagship product with uh, several hypersats sold every year. Most of our revenue will come from this line of Kriotech uh, activity. Of course, uh, the rest of the sectors we are aiming are equally important for our long-term development. Especially quantum computers have a huge potential, but it will take a little bit more time for this technology to become, to become mature. The same is true with quantum telecommunication equipment, uh, which we are also um, uh, developing. Uh, as from October last year, um, Kriotech is actually a public company uh, listed on Warsaw Stock Exchange. Uh, we have earned trust of our investors and our evaluation almost tripled uh, from the initial public offering last year. Uh, and this is still with 90% of our products, not at the market, but in the development phase. So I think uh, for Creotech, um, the future seems to be pretty bright. It's very exciting to hear about this. And I can't let you go without asking the question that I'm going to ask all our guests on Space 2022, which is how you see the future for space industries over, say, the next decade. Oh, uh, in the next decade is, is very, very bright for the space uh, sector. We have cheap rockets, um, cheap launchers. Um, we are developing um, much cheaper solutions uh, for satellites. And so the, the space uh, is becoming uh, more and uh, more open uh, to, to smaller companies and to smaller institutes uh, to, to science. So I believe um, that in the next decade, we will see a lot of um, uh, new satellites, a lot of new constellations um, that are just floating in the low Earth orbit, and uh, probably we'll see also some very interesting developments uh, towards the Moon. Greg Grosbrunner, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you a lot.